Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Headspace Podcast, the show where we break down the new hip hop albums track by track, give thoughts and opinions on every single song, focusing on the art of the album or the mixtape or whatever, the full project instead of just the singles. My name is Holden Stefan Roy, and today, I will be going through West Side Guns, Fly God is an Awesome God. And I am excited to be talking about this project today because I have become a huge fan of Griselda over the last little while. So to see this West Side Gun project drop so quickly after Benny's project, stupidly excited over here. Anyway, if you don't want to watch the intro bit, check the description of the video and you can see when we talk about every song. Meanwhile, I do want to let you know that I recognize I'm not an expert. I don't come from the lifestyle. I'm a dude in Montreal who started reviewing albums one day, but I do take this shit stupidly serious, and I go out of my way to learn as much as possible. And one of the best ways I have found to learn is by talking to y'all in the comments and just hearing what you have to say. So if you want to go out of your way to leave me a little comment, let me know what you think about what I have to say, this review, the album in general, some cool stories about West Side Gun and stuff. That would be amazing. On that note, I like to read a, a favorite comment on you know a recent video just to show some love and show that I really do care about this and yesterday we put a, a review for Machine Gun Kelly's new album Hotel Diablo and on that because as you can see in the little screenshot I'm using 11 hours ago Matt Wyden said I literally have watched his effect on hip-hop people are just drawn to it and seem to hate themselves for it xxest for l and what he's referring to here is that all things considered a lot of things that maybe some of the newer guys are doing if you trace it back to this current wave of rappers mgk may have been more influential on certain performing aspects or energies that got brought into the game than a lot of people want to give him credit for that's what was being said we're not talking about his skill as a rapper we're talking about his especially his influence as a performer to bring this rock star shit into it i really i looked into it it was really hard to find many examples of people outside of new metal doing it around when mgk came in with such a rap based element to it i digress you're not here for that that was the other review you can check that out meanwhile um we're gonna get into it real shortly and uh i just appreciated his comment because it was cool it was definitely something that was discussed in the review on one of the songs and so that he watched it and he actually interacted that was fresh i really appreciated that it makes it totally worth it to make these shits to know that people are actually gonna watch it and have a little conversation after all right so special thanks to the patrons in advance is milk Dempsey, chris prado dj Black Hurricane, Linda Williams, and Jonathan Barnes. They're totally dope. We'll touch on that at the end. Meanwhile, it's time to start the review for West Side Guns' brand new album, Fly God is an Awesome God. Um, I want to start off by contextualizing my familiarity with the artist because I think that's a totally important thing that goes into how you perceive a project. So in the case where you've been a fan of Griselda for ages, you're going to look at this and you're already going to know what to expect per se. And you're going to, you know, be hyped up for it. You know, certain songs might go, oh, shit, West Side Gun has that side to him. You know, that kind of impact if you've been following him for a quick minute. On the other hand, if you're like me, you have reviewed now a couple of Benny the Butcher projects and you know who West Side Gun and Conway are because of the distribution deal they signed with Shady which is dope right that was that was the way they structured that is actually really smart in terms of protecting the integrity of what they do and keeping ownership in a in a smarter way so that's really cool and I, I respect that deal but um I can't say outside of features he's done on uh, the Benny projects that we've talked about that I've really listened to a lot of West Side Gun, but what I heard of him, I loved his energy. I loved the way he rapped, and it had me really excited to, you know, get maybe like a different flavor of what Griselda brings to the table because everything I've heard from them has been legitimately real and dope and fresh and like passionate in a way that really excites me. So I believe West Side Gun you know he he brings that passion to the table um i don't have a lot more to say except that i recognize how little i know about their history and maybe the lifestyle that they're listening to so i'll do my best to go through this without you know try and interpret shit i don't understand some of what i really like about this album is in a lot of sense the delivery more so than the words as we'll get to um 
But why don't we touch on the cover real quickly? I like it. It's like this cartoon version of him with this really beautiful red background. It looks almost painted. His face is covered in like a little, one of those mask things. And I just, I love the coloring on his hoodie. I like the overall aesthetic. It's like, you, you know, he's got a certain lifestyle that he's got to stay a little bit hidden. But in general, it's flashy and it's powerful looking. And he's down in like that crouched pose ready to go. And it just looks like he's about to either jump up and grab a mic can spit or jump up and do some other shit i believe one of his hands is got the gun finger position thing going on too and i don't know i feel like he manages to take maybe a more cliche typical pose and makes it fresh due to the styling and coloring and it really made me curious for the project like we're gonna hear about him but because he put that effort in to make this cover kind of pop out a little bit it just made me a little more excited as far as the title goes, Fly God is an Awesome God. Um, I understand that God means black man according to 5% or a nation of Islam and how all of that's broken down. So I'm going to assume it's related to that. I didn't look too deeply into it. But uh, I have to say that this title reminded me of a Christian hymn that was sung back in the day of my life, where it'd be like, our God is an awesome God, he reigns, whatever. If you know the song, you know the song. But every time he would say, fly God is an awesome God, or I would see the title, that hymn would play through my head. And I just thought I would share that with y'all. I don't have a lot more to comment on, but the title does kind of exude a certain confidence and a certain something that really again makes with that cover of confidence and passion and everything's just ready to go it makes me want to hear what's inside so without further ado the first track on this is called july 27th it's spending 2500 a month on fucking rubber bands man so this starts off and it's got this amazing beat in my opinion it's super fun and fresh to listen to it's got this energy that i find just kind of like exciting like it's hyping it up like dar, dar, and ah it got me pumped up and then i'm not sure who west side booty is i'm assuming she sounds like a kid or a young a young person i might be completely wrong though and um she's just like there's god and there's my daddy so i'm assuming it's his kid praise both and y'all still bro uh this is griselda and it's just strong like you're saying there's god the essence and everything and then my dad these are the heroes of my life they're amazing and y'all are broke this is Griselda, just straight off the jump. And I'm like, that is a pretty strong thing to have, like, I guess your kid come in and, and just put such a bold proclamation. Like, first there's God, respect the humility, and then there's my dad, and everyone else is trash because y'all broke. <laughs> I'm like, that's a great start. But then Raekwon comes on, and the rest of this track is Raekwon kind of talking at us in, like, more of a ranty way. And it's a bit of a cosign. It's him literally kind of like, yo, man, I'm tired of spending, man. I'm tired of spending 2500 a month on fucking rubber bands. You already know, man. I'm like, I guess I've never spent 2500 a month on fucking rubber bands. So I personally do not know. But I get the idea. Go out there, get the money. Y'all are doing your thing. You elude enough for me to comprehend. And then he just starts shouting out like, yo, Wes, what's good? You know, I just want to say nothing but love to you and yours. You heard the Griselda family, some of the strongest men I've seen lately. And uh, I can definitely say that in terms of the intensity and the passion and the grittiness of the lyrics, there is definitely a, comp a comparison that could be made. That They're very Wu-Tang-like in the tenacity that they bring to the table. Uh, and they, they all have different styles from what I've heard. And with that, it's pretty cool to get a guy from the Wu-Tang come on and be like, yeah, in my opinion, these guys are like us, but in this age, because they're the toughest motherfuckers. And then kind of touches on some wisdom and then i started thinking to myself when you hear shit like wu-tang is for the children but then you hear raekwon be like yo stay genuine and solid people can't fuck with you if you kind of stay true to who you are doesn't matter what shoes you have doesn't matter whatever if you bring out a positive energy people will recognize that there's a lot of suckers and pussies out there you know what i'm saying be careful hone your square and keep being the best that you can be like all things considered this is some excellent advice that uh, Raekwon is delivering to all of us, but really is some shit that a lot of kids could benefit from too. So in a sense, what I'm saying is Raekwon's for the kids. But mostly it was when he goes, read books, man, and understand life. 
and he tells you basically to be a better listener and it's just fucking fresh you know and if you use that knowledge and information that comes from books oh you get to the next level and that's the current journey i'm going on i've read all the books that are on that book show that's my 2019 thing so i'm, I'm currently reading 33 strategies of, of war because recently we reviewed 38 strategies of raw and anyway so like i don't know the more I read shit like that, I feel like the more I can listen to stuff like this and kind of actually, it's almost like reading some of the source material that a lot of these dudes who are successful have read because a lot of successful people read the same shit. Anyway, so I really appreciate that because I do agree with him. Through reading, you can find this higher level of understanding that connects us all. And that's just fresh that he's like Raekwon coming in like the OG being like, all of this, stay true to yourself and read a fucking book that's that's what's up i'm saying that, that was pretty cool um i gave it a 4.35 the beat was fresh raekwon was cool it's definitely an introduction and like i'm not gonna go throw this on as like a random song to just vibe to but like i can't imagine now hearing this project as a whole and not having raekwon bless the mic a little bit to get us hyped up because it really hyped me up it's like all things considered you see so many cool things happening for these guys over the last little bit i mean i followed them on twitter so i'm watching them all talk and whatnot and it's really fun it's really amazing to watch guys put in this work and see it just come back to them and then to have raekwon just kind of give such a eloquent quaint and cool introduction to the project i thought that was amazing it makes me so happy for these guys and i gave this a like i think i said i gave it a 4.35 that's cool but we all wanted to hear west side rap and was, you know we get it the first track on griselda projects as i understand it is some kind of a skit that is not going to be them doing their thing that's like a brand that's part of what they do respect it cool but sensational sherry's where it's at so this is really cool because benny the butcher is on the second verse and i'll start with benny because we just talked about him if you want to check out i reviewed the plugs i met i don't know if it's going to pop up but you can check it out on his channel it's very recent but he just has this flow to him where like everything he says sounds fucking smart direct blunt to the point realistic and he uses language in a way i find intoxicating so like you might catch me at the drolo but the drum hole 50 if the pole come get me i might come home 60 you know like and he's just and it's cool because 50 to 60 but the context of what it is is completely different i believe drum has to do with the gun barrels i might be completely wrong it might be something different i'm gonna give up on what that means i just love the way it flows these two ideas are connected by like the numbers but in general they're one off lines if i get head in the whip she might come home sticky and that just keeps the rhyme going and it's true if you nut up on her face she might be a little sticky and i assume if you're getting head in the whip you're gonna nut in her face and that's just what it is it worked triple your worth if you move one low with me and that's on god you know the pies get measured that's when ties get severed and so if you work with him you know money gets multiplied but at the same time when money gets brought into the equation that's when shit gets complicated and he's not squashing bees he prefers the conflict wants to get it down and honestly the rest of this verse flows in just just beautifully i enjoyed listening to it i like when he compares himself uh west side gun and conway the machine to mike bird and magic johnson just like a fluid comparison to greatest like when i understand the basketball people they're talking about as a guy who does not watch basketball then um you know that they're the greatest that they're being compared to here either way i enjoyed his verse a lot he flows in and i like how he just starts it off with a butcher coming like his tag i fucking love it man every time i hear it it gets me real excited that's enough about the butcher though he kills it he does his thing and it just sounds like honestly line for line greatness delivered also with perfect eloquency every syllable enunciated with like a quicker upbeat pace which is cool because everything's just the way like there's a mastery to the craft of lyricism that these guys have and i say these guys because let's talk about how west side does it he is a lot i'd say slower and passion driven like the way he uses spaces in the beat and maybe it just has to do with the beat because the more you listen to this beat it's got this slow bassy driven experience it's not a very banging it's more of an intensity it's more of a you're kind of vibing you're supposed to be a little maybe pensive as you're hearing it and then like right away you fuck fear me bitches love me cancun check the chin neck looked husky friend hit the pipe one time did the doggy or however he does it with but what i love about the way he does this voice is it's like there's no like 
effects to make it sound polished. It's this raw, it's this rugged, like, almost like a fuck you in the way he says it. Like, he just... It just is so punk in a way. I really appreciated it. He doesn't sound like a good singer. He sounds like an expressive, passionate guy. Just, yo, this is what happened. He sounds a little excited, you know? And then there's like a pause and he just repeats the line. Ayo, Fiend hit the pipe one time, did the doogie. And then he keeps flowing through with these really empowered, passionately delivered line by line. Like, everything he says sounds like it has an exclamation point but in a way where everything sounds like it's purposeful and meaningful and i don't mean that negatively because some people it's an awful experience but he kind of reminds me of a ghost face killer i'm not even gonna lie in the way that he has that high energy ability to just drop a single line leave a pause do some shit and just break all of the like benny the butcher has a flow and it's an intoxicating but i'd say it's a more of a conventional flow and he masters it west side gun just seems to do whatever the fuck he wants and makes it sound really really cool and i think having both of them back to back like that hits you up on that raw rugged passion inside of shit mixed with the kind of more finesse technique side of things and collectively creates a powerful banger in my opinion i thought this is an excellent way to start off the project i mean i don't really know exactly what's going on in terms of the specifics i get the gist of it like drug dealer we snatch your cherry 38 with the potato season with peri peri but i understand potatoes are good silencers if you shoot into them you know my mac that sensational sherry no idea what that means but that's the line that gave us the um song title but he repeats it again and it's just like he just holds the sherry he just lets it go and I really like it, man. I like the way he flows through. I like the proclamation, like, fucking king in New York. Check. Uh, me. I do this shit in real life. Fly fucking God. I do this shit in real life. I'm an awesome God. I do this shit in real life. You folk is fucking broke. You folk is fucking bums. And then the butcher comes in. So it's like he sets it up like he's the boss, man. And he's just powerful. And he just... It's not very descriptive or picture painting in the same way that benny is but it's more like the energy of his delivery tells you what you need to know about what this line means in a way that maybe the coded language i'm not getting it a hundred percent i dig this track a lot though i feel like listening to this is is just the kind of grind music that like on the one hand yes there's the street side of it but then there's the sometimes you sit in there in the office place and you just want to listen to some fucking hard ass shit because you're a little bit frustrated and there's not a lot of ways to vent that out when you got to be smiling at the world so you throw on some west side gun and this track totally fits that purpose in my opinion this shit's a 4.75 it's one of my favorite songs off the album i'm not even gonna lie what a strong fucking start and the next step is Bautista ah this is good this one just comes in hard hitting and I'm I'm right away like into his energy again um hey yo let's hit the island get him out to the pile stepping on the coke SB's Nicky Diamond you couldn't walk a mile and put the barrel on this island and I, you fuck can't rhyme here no timeshare and right off the jump it's like you see them you see him coming in with this like the way he raps this verse first of all makes it sound like he's gonna knock you the fuck out even if you're respectful like even if you approach him and be like you're the shit he just sounds like he's ready to go and he's an intense person and you should not probably waste his time but the idea of coming in here and i believe it's like he's willing to go pull the gun and put it against your eyelid and i like it when rappers use these these kind of maybe not so standard um details to kind of exemplify the distinction of it right because it's one thing to say i put the gun to his head it's another thing to go yo i'm so fucking whatever with it i'll put it straight up to his fucking eyelid and you can't come rhyme here we ain't sharing and i like the idea of using a timeshare which is kind of a collective group property thing he's like nah that's not what this is instead i'm the new king of new york i be your highness so many fake people can't tell the difference broad day bullets back and forth like tennis table my main shooter yeah yo sniffing hundred thousand on the books he lost weight in prison and right away he's like i'm the king there's a lot of fake people out there 
and it's hard to tell the difference between shit and it's a violent situation but his killers is some kind of a legitimate shit they drugged out they're willing to do time they're willing to do what they got to do and you know again it's the details it's like you might have killers but i have coked out killers you're not gonna feel shit you might have killers i have killers who've done time got into better shape came back and is like ready to go he, he lost weight in prison it's like the you can just picture i was just thinking about the other day like if i went to prison i'd probably end up coming out in better shape because you're doing a bunch of like sit-ups and shit in the cell like what else are you doing while you're in there and i mean i imagine other things but i everyone seems to work out so i just thought that was again like these little details these little clues as to painting this picture of the world he's coming from caught him coming from the shower had to rip and praise both or it's sacrilegious mathematicians money machines broke fiends overdose and over dishes don't owe us or you get your mom smoked and again it's just these almost one-liners that connect in in a way where like the flow and the rhyming all connects but it's like every sentence is a different little thing here to paint a picture that you do not want to fuck with him he is the king and legitimate as uh, as whatever and then we get this hook my surfing on the race shooting at the roof and it reminded me a lot of one of the songs on the rhapsody album where she kind of i think it's ooh is the name of the song and the ooh that i don't know if that's like a real thing if that's like a shout out to some kind of thing but i felt like it was very similar to that in terms of the things i've heard and i thought it was cool because it's like a game this deliberately i know i can't sing but i'm doing it anyway attitude that just fits in perfectly with the package of everything he's putting to it you know Matt, mr hit his baby's mom's pull her in the coop you know fiend locked up in the bathroom trying to show oh, damn he's got a shooter he's fucking your mom there's people getting high in a you know a descriptive kind of way like it's one thing to be like i said the fiends it's another thing to acknowledge the fact that yeah these fiends are then going to use the drug in a pathetic way in the bathroom stall and be like that it's interesting it's like the awareness to understand what really happens in this situation is definitely being displayed here is i guess what i'm trying to convey and it's stuff like that that makes me appreciate i don't know maybe every, like like it just makes me appreciate that this isn't just some flamboyant shit for the sake of it it's a guy expressing you know his using his imagination to paint out these pictures of what he's you know maybe gone through or experienced in his world i'm going to assume that there's some legitimacy to his claims but again i don't have proof of anything there um the second verse is the same kind of thing it just kind of flows in and it's just like ayo mac interstellar engaged storms and cooked a brick lacking filthy umbrella in the back it got an angel drip and it's just describing his gun is what i'm understanding there and i don't a hundred percent like i don't fully get it like i just don't understand it all but it sounds so fucking cool to listen to because of the way he he forms the language together like as a person who maybe doesn't live the life as much as like the full meaning of that is there i can under I'm, I'm not really that into guns so it's hard for me to fully grasp each of the pieces what i'm trying to say though is the way he puts mac interstellar cool and then a gauge storms and cook the brick and the way he flows these just three separate little ideas that kind of flow together lack and fill the umbrella in the back it got angel drip using kind of two rhyme schemes there to throw it all together is an interesting way of writing because it all works and it feels like it connects together and i don't know he has storms hitting up the umbrella in the next line anyway i i really like it even if i don't fully get it and i feel like the way he delivers it with that like almost yelling energy to it is just fantastic it just sounds like everything is the most factual thing he's ever fucking said anyway uh at the end of the the verse he kind of does a little repetition thing you know some uh somebody had me to play you know you're sniffing dust and shit you know double back stuff with bigs match the rat parker coop 300 meet the body back hustler make sure to work clean talking pine saw rocking all this giant candy talk the lights off and he kind of repeats it again and it's cool i like this like it's almost like a little extra hook in it and it made me realize a little bit that sometimes full comprehension of what's being said in the song is completely unnecessary for your enjoyment of it sometimes just hearing the guy rap out the words i hearing the flow hit it so proper i hearing the, the finesse of how like every syllable is just perfectly placed inside of the little pockets of this beat in order to create this great experience just his expressive delivery so i i confess to my full ignorance here 
but I do know what a good rapper is and why somebody can rap well. And I think that West Side Gun's killing it on this one. Also, I wasn't sure if the Bautista's the soccer player or the wrestler, but given the wrestlers, it could be Dave Bautista he's talking about because there's some wrestling references later on. Anyway, I get his track a 4.35. Perhaps my inability to connect with it helped me from getting it to a higher grade, but in general, I loved listening to it. And again, when I'm in, this is like, a slow grind album like sometimes you have these high energy needs and sometimes you just want to be in a more calm composed pace and i think west the pacing on this album it's honestly refreshing like he's not trying to follow some trends he's not he's just kind of this is what i wanted it to be and considering how maybe upbeat a lot of other things are and everyone's focused on how oh fast rapping is the greatest at least in the circles of people i talk to i think that west side gun is killing it on the slower end of this frontier just by how powerful and enigmatic his uh, delivery is anyway i think i'm repeating myself so let's talk about luncheon hey yo i want me and my niggas to i like how a lot of these songs aren't necessarily trying to be like these full song experiences and instead it feels more like this is what west side gum wanted to express on this like it, it this is a grimy and gritty album is is i guess what i'm trying to say like it starts off with this little chorus here hey yo, i want me and my people to have back-to-back -back yachts lick the m16 i got one on my ops one thought that he had the hops he tried to jump the fence what lord why he do that his kids never seen him since so i guess what i'm taking from that is he um is aspiring to get to a point where him and his people all have equipment and stuff and one of the things i've noticed is at least the people i seem to like in this world of hip-hop are the ones that are about the team like there's a difference between people in it for themselves and people who are in it because there's a greater purpose or because everyone has to win i'm building up the community and that kind of stuff and just these little lines like that i think give you a good intention that nowhere on this album has it been like west side gun has to become riches for the sake of himself nah he has people he's involved with others there's a team and there's a squad and a movement of sorts here and so the end result is i want these guys to have back-to-back -back yaks to get that i got the gun i'm ready to take out an op of mine which i believe is an opponent i might be wrong or opposition either way some dude you know he tried to jump the fence or whatever you know crossed him in some way and just the way he responds with why did he do that his kids ain't seen him since it's like he doesn't say he killed him he says he's gone and he's almost sad that this had to happen. Like, why did you have to fucking get into a situation where you're going to disappear? And I like that hook. And I thought it was a super fucking strong start to the song. Then the verse comes through and it's got one really good verse. He's delivering it proper. Um, it's, again, the same kind of vivid descriptive shit, you know. Threw him in the shower with the chainsaw. You know, I guess we're following up with what happened with the person that he killed. And cocaine war, give up the wops, take the chain off. And then he has that boom, 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 boom that he throws into the background. And I have to give him credit here, man. This guy knows how to do ad libs. His ad libs are like across the board fantastic. They at first come off a little bit much the first time I heard it, but the more I listened to it, the more I felt like they just added to the aesthetic of the track in a way that really just fills it up beautifully and adds to that energy. It's almost like he doesn't care if the ad lib cuts him off. If it's the right ad lib, if we need the gun sounds, if we need to go, yo, it's flag guy and repeat it, it doesn't matter what it is. It just sounds fresh when he does it. Like they're always in the perfect places, and not a lot of people, I think, can do it so well as what i've heard what west side gun do in the more like obvious like a lot of people do the more complimentary ad libs i feel like west side gun uses the ad libs as a main feature in his rhymes and that's really cool anyway so it just kind of paints the picture of him you know you know bleed the wall wipe the brains off cane rain cough i pray to god that the scale ain't off so it's like he's dealing with the murder of a person and the like the gritty exposure to shit like literally bla brains being blown off and then simultaneously flipping into hoping that the scale's proper and the coke situation's nice and then immediately after the prada slippers drooly glisten pull up half the roof missing and it's just fascinating it's like 
now he's in the car and everything's good so it's almost like this transition from i had to commit the murder the situation was okay i ended up being all right and here's the result of this but you know then kind of in a very pensive tone going through the rest of the verse tying up loose enders smack him with the 40 now his tooth missing laid him on a table had to pool stick him it's glory it's glory it's fly god Ayo, i want me and my to have back-to-back dracos so it's like he's dealing with the opposition in the way that he has to and again he's motivated by the quest to be in with him and his people my microwave rock and roll let's lock and load tiffany's handles on the white gold stones 30 in the oven these say i'm bugging i'm on the yard with the bone crusher like a luncheon i don't fully know what he means there 100 percent, but i like how it sounds and i really enjoy the rhyme the way he rhymes everything together and the way he references these top tier brands in a way where you know like since it's not just about him i kind of want to see his whole team win i kind of want to see him achieve it it's like i need to get to this level where tiffany's is the regular for everybody and i think that's it's just cool and people are kind of questioning him but i look at it more like having access to tiffany's means i've made it i've come this far that i can just go do that like i would like to have the wealth in my life to just go do that i personally don't care about a lot of the flashy shit but i think it is a measure of success to be able to just get to that point then there's this beautiful little outro bit by keisha plum where she goes imagine if this was the last poem i write imagine your mom snorting lines of white imagine a feeling when the judge gave him life imagine if west side gun never touched a mic and i just thought that was like so powerful so questioning like you know with an idea of death or consequence or whatever like this could be it this could be the last piece of creation or the last song that anyone really does and this this could be the last video i make you know and then to take it to a darker reality imagine that now your mom is sniffing cocaine and then imagine the judge sentences him to life imagine west side gun ended up not touching the mic or if khan never got shot imagine if time just stopped imagine all of this then imagine it again it's griselda records to the fucking end so i imagine that this is uh, looking at it like what if all the things that led to this moment in history never happened and it was just over and everybody got locked up and taken out nah that's not what happened imagine it again we's griselda we here and i think it's true man i think griselda's got a long career coming and then it moves into this skit where um i believe somebody's talking to, to a reporter about or an interviewer kind of like oh you know gucci are you still supporting them in light of the blackface and all of that's their controversy and he's like what controversy he's like i don't really care about that shit i'm, I'm gonna do what i want to do i'm gonna support who i want to support and that's just the way i'm gonna live my life i'm not a follower people can't tell me what to do and uh then the guy's like okay so what are you gonna do he's like i'm about to go into gucci he's like were you at all disrespected by the whole blackface controversy like, i'm about to go into gucci and what i thought was amazing about that little skit at the end is because it, it on the one hand it showcases him as a leader who's willing to just stand up in the face of whatever other people expect him to do and go and do what he wants which is really really cool and if he wants gucci he's gonna wear it gucci because that's his choice and his right and his whatever but i think what's super fascinating about this is that the reporter does not give a fuck what his responses are he's just like asking the questions to get the headlines so he can go west side gun doesn't care about gucci blah 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 or the other way around you know it just sounds like a bait it's like he refuses to comment specifically on this controversy and in light of that the, the reporter just does not let it go even though he's like i'm going to go to gucci were you disrespected by it like the guy's going to gucci obviously he's not shut the fuck up and move on and then it just kind of flows into the next song so i appreciated the messaging in the skit and its purpose and all that but it did hurt the grade of the song a little bit because it is kind of part of the song and i kind of wish he had just put the skit as like a separate little thing that's just my opinion i love the energy i like the way the ad libs flow up and i gave this a 4.25 on 5 um I don't know. I really like it. So I think it's time for us to move on to the next song with Faragamo Funeral. Yeah, I really like this one. It's short and sweet. It's a minute, 24 seconds, but that beat is intoxicating. It just keeps building up and it sounds explosive. Like it's kind of like when I was describing on July 27th that it, it keeps kind of hyping itself up a little bit. Only it's 
well no it's just that it keeps kind of hyping itself up but in a more smooth laid back kind of way so it's, i just kind of picture like a tide building up and then collapsing and a, a bit of a wave flowing and over that he comes in rapping and um i didn't quite catch all the lyrics so i heard shit like you know fly the field entire shit got real um saint laurent can't to ask the studio for something to kill a shot for at the doorway attack from all four he ran it at the telespot sniffed off the nose off feeling blip shot too and it flows in like that it sounds very hard i don't 100 percent understand every word he said and i don't understand what he's going on about in a specific way in terms of getting the line by line but from a more kind of just enjoying it point of view the energy again is proper and it just feels like it flows so well in the way i'm listening to it and the way he overuses the word for and things like that in a creative and crafty situation like he already attacked from all four and then a few lines later shot him in the 404 four, sorry shot him in the four for four and hit the table for netta or whatever he says there and it's just it sounds amazing and it just shows this creative ability to manipulate language in a way to build out the exact flow that you're looking for and i gotta give him a lot of credit for that i like the you know caught us on a, caught up on a rottweiler line at the end it's pretty cool and then it flows into a little second verse ayo buck 50 trouble your face will get bell build started with a double up didn't get doubled uh pillow on your head make the max sound muffle good night rest well S good night sleep tight and I love the way he ends that. So he's, the whole first verse, it sounds super fucking hard. And then he just comes in and blasts you through a pillow. And you're just like, okay, you're gone. You're in bed. Sleep tight. The permanent kind. You know, life's going to move on. Uh, and you're not going to be there anymore. Have a great rest. And I just, I just the, the nonchalance in the way that he delivers that, like it's just so normal. Like it's just so regular for him to run up in somebody's house and just murder them like that that's fucking intense and i love the the passion that he brings into this and this little experience was pretty cool so i gave it a 4.5 on 5 and i really like west side gun on these little short snippet fucking come in punch it out and go home type songs it was really cool to hear then we have the next track which i believe is called thousand shot mac yeah, this track is, again, pretty freaking awesome to listen to. I don't know, man. I think it's that every song, from an instrumental perspective, has this almost elaborately jazzed... Uh, I don't know if it's jazz, but it's like an elaborately sample-driven sounding, smooth, like, old-school feel going on to it. And it almost feels like I'm back in, like, 1997 or something just listening to some fresh shit that dropped, even though it's 2019. But this song features a few friends. We've got Mayhem Lauren, who starts us off, who I don't really know that I've heard before. I might have, but the name hasn't stuck. But now the name will stuck because I thought it was pretty fucking strong. Like, I stacked 50 last week. I'm about to spend a portion. Never divorce him with this life. So I'm a dying gold. I abide the code. Meanwhile, you cats divide, fold, told, and got paroled. I ain't calling you out. Just cross the street when you see me. So actually, I feel like he's a little clearer, a little less coded. But that's okay because you, you want the clear guys and you want the coded guys in your squad because that kind of gives you a, a fresher diversity to your overall project. But, I mean, this is pretty clear. He um, basically is stacking shit. He doesn't plan on dying. And he follows the code of life in uh, or the G code. And... Um, on the other side of the fence other folks might be a little bit on the snitchier side of things and are getting out a little early when they shouldn't be they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing and rather than calling out particular people he calls out the behavior but lets the individuals who are going to hear this and know what's about them know that they're gonna have to cross the street uh, but when they see him are they gonna get smacked out you know and i like when he just goes from a half a gram to a hand to hand for a half a gram now it's trench coats imported from japan and amsterdam which i thought was a pretty crafty way of describing going from like selling drugs to like making dope ass shit and whatnot because it's kind of what happens you know you start off maybe being the guy who is giving the drugs and then you're the guy who's maybe grabbing the money and i know it's different people handling it all handling it all and then uh so i thought that was pretty cool 
Anyway, maybe I'm wrong about the, the progression, but it just feels like there's this flow to it. And the rest of his verse is very good. And I was like, wow, this is, this is a really strong start. And then West Side Gun comes in and like just the contrast in the tones of their voices fills out the song in a really amazing way. Because West Side's riding in that more high pitched uh, range of voice. And when you look at him, you don't expect him to sound like that. I don't know. That was just me because I like heard him. And then I saw what he looked like. I'm like, damn. That's a cool voice to fit that guy. You just wouldn't see it coming. Not in a bad way, just whatever. Um, hey, yo, you ain't never met a like me in your life. See, I was probably locked him on the yard with the knife. Money on your head, what's the price? What's the price? Cooked the whole brick kitchen, ain't had no light. And, you know, it's just kind of like I am somebody unlike what you've met. And I have to say the tenacity and what he's going on with, there's not a lot of people, I think, that are coming in sounding like him, at least in the musical sphere of the current era. He's the only one that I've heard that's currently doing this kind of thing, right? So it's true. I never met somebody like him like that. And then just kind of pointing out, you know, again, a little more of that descriptive painting of his environment. Like, see, I was probably locked him in the yard with a knife. That I can picture is when you're in prison and, you know, the CO's kind of set up a situation where bad things are going to happen to you and everybody's in on it because money's on your head. And then, you know, he's going to come in and uh, take care of the situation and uh, take that little uh, prize home is what I'm understanding. And, you know, cook the whole brick. Kitchen ain't had no light. It's like even in an environment where you can't see, he's skilled enough to pull it off and do what needs to get done. That tenacity is fucking awesome. I don't know. Flows to the rest of his verse. It's really fucking great. Gunshots drop your jaws. He ain't dead yet. Had to blow his head the fuck off. I'm in the mess on Thursday eating chicken with the drug lords wholesale. Oh well. I know your friend. Sure, if I just ain't seen the bro sell, but got me on the coattail. My first got three with no shells. Been shooting ever since. You know me well. You know me well. And it's crazy how it's just again that nonchalance and like yeah, I'm just sitting here eating some chicken with drug dealers and shit. You know, big time stuff. Um, and you know, I come from the situation when you know back in the day I started and then I've been grinding ever since. And this is where I'm at with my current life. Then hologram I've never heard of before, unfortunately, because he's also really fucking cool. You know, he's got a girl with the same color of his dunch. And uh, she said, Holly, go drag your nuts. She queefed melodically in Greek mythology. Nike is the goddess of victory. And she shit's lit to me. And that is an amazing series of lines. Um, so first, he has to go drag his nuts which I don't fully get what that means, I'll be honest. But then she queefed melodically in Greek mythology and then referencing the Greek god, Nike is the goddess of victory and that shit's lit to me. So somehow her vagina exudes air in a way that leads to victory in his life. And that's pretty cool. And then the weed's got a litany, the side effects that get to me, that shit ain't shit to me. I get hired in a war drone in a war zone. I should win awards, bro, and go on tour, ho. I don't know about winning awards and go, but you should definitely go on tour because I would come pay you. I mean, I, I'd go to give Benny the award first and then West Side. And I don't know enough about Kanye. So maybe, Conway, so maybe I'll be giving it to Conway too once I hear a Conway project and do the same kind of thing with it. Still, Hologram impressed the shit out of me. That was a really cool verse. And I thought it was great and enjoyable to listen to. And then Conway comes in and he, I felt like he's on the more technical side of things like Benny is. And I thought that was really dope and a fresh way to like end this shit off on um i don't know if there's a lot that i can comment on the specifics you know in your bushes they're waiting for the case smoke the shooter had to sniff a 50 just so he could stay woke and damn that's crazy right like you got people that are hiding out in ambush waiting for you and they need to do a little bump or whatever to stay focused and ready to go when it comes in people ain't got no ambition so y'all gonna stay broke and that's a fair point in life a lot of people have no ambition aren't willing to do stuff so if you're not willing to take race and to go out there and put yourself out there and make things happen in your life and again it doesn't have to be moving drugs it's whatever the hell you got to be doing if you don't have the ambition to put into work to accomplish the things you probably will stay broke in your life like i'm not rich but I'm definitely not broke anymore. And that's pretty cool. And why? Because ambition. And because a bunch of these guys said, if I can do it, you can do it in their own unique ways. And it all inspired me, which is facts. And I'm not saying that facetiously. I'm saying I listen to these dudes. And when I'm back at work, I think about their wisdom and how I should tactfully navigate the situation. And it ends up getting me paid more in the long run. So I give thanks to the people who took the time to put their wisdom out like this, like each of the dudes in this song, where everything I'm 
Thomas album has been so far. It's in that realm of sharing my experiences so you can almost learn from it and see how good I'm doing. Because it's a bit of flossing. Nothing wrong with that. Anyway, I like the way Conway describes stuff. It's another fucking great song. Um, he goes, who's the better rapper? I haven't met him. I have my little savage ready. Hope your mama got a casket ready. I don't know about Conway being the best rapper ever, but I uh, don't know that he said ever. I think he was just kind of questioning it. Like, if you came at me, I'm the better rapper and I'll destroy you. So bad original thought, cool end thought for me there. Anyway, it's pretty powerful. If you come at him, your mom better have the casket ready. He's going to take you out. Savagery. This song is really good. It's, in my opinion, one of the highlights off this album. So if you're only going to check out a couple and you want that intensity, posse cut feel, Thousand Shot Mac is the one for you. 4.5 on 5. Definitely one of my favorites. And why don't we move on and talk about Birkin. Burberry rain suits for a rainy day. Seriously, this song doesn't have a whole lot from West Side Gun in it, but still happens to be in my opinion one of the stronger songs on the album showing how little you can do with the right level of timing and pacing like something i don't think i've really described enough is how he's willing to pause like midline leave it open for like a bar or two just let the beat play out almost like let you resonate or meditate on what he just said before he slams it back in sometimes he'll repeat the line sometimes he'll do something different but every time he does this it has this complete control over exactly how to use the timing and i think this song he again uses that slow calm pacing to build almost a suspense with it that makes it totally cool like the lyrics there's not a lot a burberry rain shoes for a rainy day i mean burberry is a fancy brand and then he has the right shoes for a rainy day hanging out the bentley coupe with the throwaway all right uh horse ain't the same headshots so all you see is brains the whole hood know my name put my first cat in the hall of fame so you can just kind of picture him and he used to run through in the car and perform certain actions using this gun and he's so significant now and he's so famous in in like the way that the hood has his back that his gun should be retired in the way people get jerseys and shit that are retired because at the end of the day where he is now obviously he doesn't need to use the gun no more but he put in his time and he did it all super legitimate and then i just i like the chorus i do you filthy for the back i do you filthy for the back and just the way he delivers that like Y'all want to play fair. Y'all want to fight. Fuck that shit. I will just be the dirtiest, dirtiest, ruthless, fucking destroy you. Whatever, man. I'll sneak. I'll kill your mom. I'll do whatever I got to do for that bag. It's just the tenacity and that one line repeated a whole bunch of times. And I think that with the way he rhymes and the way he expresses it, he gets away with this. And then his little outro. You ever seen Brains before? You selling cane raw? A hundred bricks in a while? We the flyest of them all. And then it's just pointing out like yeah sure maybe whatever but i've seen brains i've been in a situation where the shit's gone to the worst of the worst and i've had to be in that moment and go through it because we're going through this life and we got the legitimate of what's going on with all the bricks in the wall and whatnot so there's significant volume there's significant risk there's significant consequence and there's a significant level of actions you got to be willing to commit in order to pull it off and then what's crazy is this little outro he has where it's an actual interview of um andy warhol with mean uh gene uh, come, sorry, fuck mean gene okerland i forget his name sorry he's uh one of the wwe's announcer dudes and i believe he recently passed away so rest in peace and he's interviewing andy warhol in 1985 and he just have him being all hyped up like this is the most incredible thing you've ever seen and it's just andy warhol's response is i think he's just blitzed right and he's just like uh i'm speechless it's just so exciting i don't know what to say it's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. The most exciting thing. And I think why this is used is because on the one hand, what is being described by Benny, uh, by West Side Gun, sorry, is this crazy situation of gunshots and brains blowing. It's this spectacular thing. It's, it's, it's crazy, but he feels more like Andy Warhol where it's like, yeah, it's just kind of whatever. It's like he's saying the words, but he's so numb and blasé to the situation that it's just kind of a regular thing. The best, you know, all this crazy elaborate stuff that he's seeing is just regular sounding, you know? 
I don't know. Or it's just because the tone that Andy Warhol uses is kind of like, yep, yep, this is crazy good. I, I get it, you know. And maybe it's a cheap shot of pointing out how everyone else in the game is kind of fake, like wrestling. And when he responds to them, he's the real deal. So everyone else can hype it up like Mean Gene can and make it all sound a certain way. But at the end of the day, he knows what's up. In the same way that Andy Warhol probably knew that wrestling was fake and, you know, probably was just like, yeah, this is the greatest thing ever. Because I felt there was a bit of sarcasm. Like, you can kind of, if I watched a video clip of that interview, and it kind of looks like, whoever it is i don't know if vince is in charge yet but whoever it is tells him to cut the interview short because this shit's not working i digress i enjoyed listening to this and i gave it uh another 4.5 on 5 sorry yeah 4.5 because honestly it's hilarious it's well put together and it's a super strong fucking track for the little bit that is actually in it anyway the next one is called pete's sake so this one just features Conway the Machine and Mr. Bane the Butcher, which I thought was cool because honestly, in their mind, the three of them are a seamless entity in the kind of way where like a Wu-Tang album might just have a song featuring other people in the squad because it's just right to put on your people like that. So conway just comes in and again it's just fresh rhyming yeah my kicks cost your mortgage my brakes and my bitch was imported we zipped through the porsches Whew. his shoes cost more than your fucking i guess mortgage that's how much you pay in a month for the for the house or the total mortgage like his shoes i guess you could have shoes that are worth more than a monthly mortgage pretty easily that's pretty cool my brakes and my bitch was imported so his girl comes from somewhere else and his you know cocaine comes from somewhere else and maybe they're from the same place because ladies from those countries are quite gorgeous see what i did there i rhymed a little bit uh we zipped through in porsches i used to have zips of the purest he even had a me run in dc like clinton porous which is um what is he he is the running back of the washington redskins in the mid 2000s see so he went up there did a little thing got some success like that dude and i appreciate that he flows in and it's really good i find his whole verse consistent it's proper my shooter like harding because he involved in all the scoring the fly god is an awesome god shouting out the name of the album the project west side gun i guess that little hit three said i told him awesome job don't get no fuck about no rappers they can all get mopped the shit is easy like cold pepper throw a masa lob i don't know what that last line meant but in general it's just cool he's like he's kind of giving a shout out to west side gun here saying yo the dude's awesome and everybody's killing it and everything just feels like that camaraderie and i appreciate the squad feel of this like these are not guys who are in it for themselves they're in it for the team like i've said before and i think that's something i very much appreciate from this type of stuff as i try to build up my own team and stuff in life then benny comes in he doubled down and took every risk he couldn't afford losing and that's how he went from jumped in a four and right out the ford fusion so he took the risk he succeeded he pulled it off everything's good now um and overall his verse is tightly delivered both of these guys i feel like are excellent rappers in terms of flow and technique and construction um i don't know there's not a lot more in his verse that i thought was super cool but there is more wrestling references here like uh, at the end he goes y'all dick riding worship folk like they bleed different okay blood on the apron you know it's the busher i just i love when he pulls out you know like he's coming you know butcher coming i believe he says that there and it, the ad lib there got me hyped up whip a brick hard and then tip the cooker off the row peas flying like jimmy snooker ah, and then it just ends and it's fresh it's cool because people are kind of i guess worshiping a lot of shit that's fake instead of going out there and doing their own thing where instead he's out there accomplishing his own he's put the blood on his apron he's done what he's had to do he moves his units and does his thing and then he moves peas like a flying jimmy snooker which is cool because i guess these guys really do like wrestling there has been a few uh wrestling references on this project and we'll get a couple more in the next few songs so this one has a powerful outro on top of that all where it's a news reporter kind of just commenting on how a bunch of folk were shot 
and um, witnesses apparently overheard the shooter tell a woman, I told you I would fix this, followed by some cuss words, and then he kills her. And then it just ends with, sources tell News 4 that the incident has been in retaliation for shootings on Thursday, east side, west side, north Buffalo, south Buffalo, downtown. When it comes to violence in the Queen City, there's no border. And I think that's a powerful way of saying this is where we come from. It's so fucked up that the news is just saying like the whole city's crazy and there's all this violence and death and things going on. And, you know, as time goes on, there seems to be like a big elevation in gun violence. Like even if you go look at the rate, the, the rate of gun violence in Toronto, we shoot a lot of people. We don't kill a lot of people in Toronto. There's a lot of shootings, though, not a lot of deaths. And that's a, it's just crazy, you know, in the modern world. So uh, as much as I I think they're trying to say that as much as all this stuff happens in life, it happens in life because it really is this crazy of an environment it really is this dangerous and it really is this fucked up and i feel like oftentimes people will judge this lifestyle as though people have other options but then they don't really well i mean i'm not saying that people don't have other options i'm saying that statistically speaking you don't have a lot of options in that environment there probably is going to be x number of jobs but a lot more people not getting that job because there's just not many people investing in these communities still which is still fucked up so i feel like guys like griselda will go back and invest in the community once the money comes in though and that's part of what makes me admire and respect what they are is they seem to be bigger than themselves in the way they approach it while you know claiming their stake in modern day hip-hop i really enjoyed this song 4.5 on 5 really cool track it's a really uh, to me it's a, another standout that you should listen to just because it's fresh anyway the next one on this is amherst station 3 Central Park shit. School six, school 61. Hey, time to walk. I like this one. It's kind of got this like calmer, almost like sadder beat to it. Um, it He comes in and he sounds the same. Something I really dig about him is how he sounds the same almost on every song, no matter what he's talking about. And he uses the music to convey more of the emotional tone. So we know this is a sadder song because of it's got like a sadder music. Plus what he's saying is definitely sadder. But using the music to convey emotion like that is he does it really expertly whereas other people will rely on more of their vocal delivery he wants to be that it's almost i don't want to call him a tough guy but the way he raps he just sounds like a tough guy you don't want to fuck with in every single song so in this one it's got one little verse and then another little skit at the end and in this verse it's like he's almost reminiscing central park shit school six to school 61 every time i walk the pain doors better have a gun went back and had a yacht with lunch <coughs> and here it's like you see him almost like questioning back in the day in the central park line and i recently watched that uh when they see his video where it was describing i guess the kind of tension that might have existed in a central park situation where it maybe wasn't the safest and i'm not trying to imply anything negative here i'm just saying that the environment didn't look to be the safest where perhaps it was in your mindset better to have a gun if you were moving in certain ways but then to go back and have a yacht with lunch it's like now it's success you know rode our bikes over kensington bridge trinidad park and free lunch rest in peace not rest in peace Barry. rest in peace mick i heard he got killed by ferry and then it just starts listing people who are no longer with him and then he from that point kind of flows into some girls so he started fucking stephanie and he had a crush on pam the brother was looking good though come here and take my hand only took one loss somebody stabbed him and we went from girls to him getting stabbed to but he's okay it was only a little standing um and then he just came back in bold on school on monday like fuck them all i'm gonna do what i have to do and then it just kind of ends a bit a couple more references kind of like yo i beat the deal i didn't get any bad situations happening from that point on and he's killing it and then fuck some people who i'm not sure who they all are and then i just kind of flows into the macho man randy savage proposing to elizabeth on um i guess raw or smackdown or something and then it ends with like oh we're gonna get a wedding which actually kind of makes sense to flow into the next song so maybe this is the tale of how he met some girl in a situation or floss stuff i don't really know 
to me this was like a kind of all over the place little song but i enjoyed listening to it because he covers so many different topics in this vignette style that it just really engrosses you over this beat it just sounds beautiful to listen to and he sounds amazing over it so i gave it a 4.5 on 5 i thought this was a fresh song and if, again you should definitely check this one out and then yeah as they're the wedding it's important to talk about the dance flow love like i remember the first time i heard how much of a romantic ghost face killer could be it blew my mind in the same way when i heard this song it really blew my mind because you are just not expecting it like i don't know if west side gun has this level of romance in other albums but personally i think i'd like to hear it because there's something powerful about a guy who's basically a hard-ass killer the rest of the time just be like i only had to see who wants to fall in love with you because you know that everything he says has like a severity to it so if he's making a claim like this right so if everything he says is so profound to say i looked at you one time i fell in love with you I can almost imagine that being the girl hearing that, that must be like, holy shit, he's really like serious about it, you know? Like, there's no fucking around. I did my bid, you held it down, I had to fuck with you. She stuck around even though he had a situation go down. We could fuck anywhere, cocaine powder on the dinner plate, I had to back up, you got to the... You got the dinner straight body looking banging in that wang you know we fuck anywhere i guess she's involved in the drugs world or maybe they did some coke and fucked um apparently that's a good time and then you know he describes being out in vegas and you got us some bottles of ace we got faded till the sun come out they talked for a while and then it's just like he's he's even willing to licking the pussy from behind and i'm just gotta say like that's bold for him to go as far as to be like listen i'm willing to eat that pussy and anybody wants to fuck you they're gonna get killed you'll get 32 shots for this pussy and he'll fucking kill you if you go near his girl overall i feel like as far as the hardest of the hard can go this is like one of the sweetest most romantic like wow i mean whatever girl this is for I bet I bet she got a little wet hearing him say it. That's all I'm trying to say. Like hearing this track, this will to take a minute and twenty seconds to just share love like that in the middle of all this. It's just pointing out like there's more to life than maybe that. It's like you have to add in that person who holds you down, that person you you love to kind of build it up. And I thought that was just cool to see that side of him tucked in. A little short one, not necessarily whatever, but for and what's cool is now that I think about it we don't really hear him being a misogynist on this album he's not fucking a bunch of hoes he's not actually disrespecting women in any kind of way in fact i guess the first time i mean he's particularly brought up women would be this person i guess he loves that he really wants and i think that's significant because a lot of times people do just fuck a bunch of hoes and whatnot i'm not saying he doesn't fuck hoes i'm saying that on this album i haven't heard him talking about fucking hoes in fact this is makes this song extra powerful because if he had thrown this love song on here but you know i was fucking twins three songs earlier that would be kind of weird so it adds to the brand of consistency of dopeness and freshness that is west side gun and i get this on a five on five it is my favorite song on this album it is extra dope on that note let's move into gun lib <laughs> So this one has a couple of verses and a little chorus, and it samples the song right on the tip of my tongue by Brenda and the Tabulations, which I never heard before. But he uses the right on the tip of my tongue line right in the middle of the verse and stuff to add effect, and I thought that was really fucking cool. Overall, I think this song kind of follows suit with a lot of the other ones in terms of that picture painting one-liner stuff he's been doing. Um, it's got a flossy, fun, really smooth beat, and he just glides over it like perfectly like the way he can glide over a beat is magnificent he goes ayo street sweepers hanging out on the corniches walked on water way before jesus cooked a brick with no stove pushed how do you cook a brick with no stove a hot plate could you do it with a hot plate anyway push to go demon before i ki uh, tell kill me twice know the reasons you know right on the tip of my tongue so he takes that like sample and ties it in with like understand the reasons for why people need to die and whatnot and I, I guess it just flows on through i don't have a lot more to like really comment on this song except for the hook i really do like it didn't hit a mob but it was close enough did it broad days so you know it's us and another thing i think that real folk do 
that the fake folk don't do is point out maybe imperfections and think about it didn't hit them all but it was close enough we we didn't kill them all we we didn't accomplish that goal we killed enough of them to make the point though so it's not perfect it's just good enough it's just what is more of a realistic outcome perhaps to a situation but the important part is that they did it broad day so you know who it is because that was the real situation you know going down bailey in the maybach kick down the door where the safe at and then you know commit the robbery and go through that whole process but i just i love the part where he doesn't sound like a perfect superhero he sounds like a real man that is just capable of getting shit done in a greater capacity to other people and because he keeps it real and he does it all proper you know i don't have a lot more to comment on the second verse it flows it's really good to listen to i don't know what hitler 3 is i don't know if that was actually like a project or something they dropped they didn't look it up but at the end of the day i like this song a lot i gave it a 4.35 on 5 and it ends with a little outro that goes did it hit a mob but it was close enough and i'm awesome which again sounds like a wrestler and if you think about it it kind of is like west side gun is creating this wrestler persona in a hip-hop world of a dude who's just bold and tenacious and he's almost like this randy savage figure in hip-hop and the way he's tenacious and he's killing it and i'll agree with him he's completely fucking awesome that's definitely true too so i like the way he brings in the wrestling stuffs to kind of add elements to it but then you know uses the news story to add legitimacy to it all it's really cool there's one more on the album it's called lakers versus rockets but i must point out that the raptors won this song is pretty freaking great too i'm not gonna lie it comes in with a boom 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 booms and the way he does his ad libs on this track is just excellent like he'll go like whip the deuce to a four way my wrist go hard my wrist go hard and then as he's still like kind of yelling out the ad lib my work cracked just bite the glass cut his hand open the doors on the lamb open skirt you know like he really creates this animated experience as you go through the track with it everything again in this song same kind of shit we've been going through i don't know if there's a lot more i can really contribute in terms of breaking down his lyrics and saying that there's anything but i do i do have to point out here he does love his side bitch so i did point out that you know in terms of how he's talking about his girls and whatnot he does have a, another couple ladies i suppose so that's part of the game something to just kind of add to it which is fine because he loves her and he's willing to take care of her and you know deal with some shit so it's again not talking down on them and i have no personal beef with people seeing multiple ladies that's all up to everybody if the women i uh, know who he is and everybody's uh understands the situation who is anybody else to uh judge it but the fact that he takes care of the people in his life like yo he doesn't just fuck the side hoe he takes care of her he appreciates her for who she is it's that type of shit that makes a man a man in my opinion it's a bit different and then sauce walker comes in and i just love his delivery the cadence on his flow and the way he delivers lines is just fantastic and he's so blunt prostitutes selling pussy in the parking meters taco trucks on the corner selling fresh fajitas literally it's almost like you got the hose and the taco trucks right next to each other on the same fucking corner and this is the environment that he's painting to us right off the jump Burberry summer linen shorts max stuff between them my city hot as hell I live around a bunch of demons and it flows on through from there and again it's the cadence and the way he uses his voice that to me is just truly spectacular and you should check it check this out if you haven't heard it because from a delivery perspective this might be one of the coolest ones on the album that isn't like from a more like tricky raps this is more of like a flowy cadence that I don't know how to properly describe but it's worth checking out I like when he's like, I'm in the Maybach, curtains lifted up, watching rugby. I had to learn how to hug the Glock. Nobody hugged me. I had to learn how to love the block. Nobody loved me. My name is more enormous in the concrete. That's powerful, right? The fact is, nobody loved him or appreciated him. His family situation wasn't proper. So he was forced into an environment where he had to learn to love the Glock and the block and this lifestyle because otherwise, what? He's just on his own. He lost his brother. Ah, oh, it's painful to hear, you know? And then just the way he ends it, another ghetto book closed. Ooh, we. And then Griselda by Fashion Rebels. And the album just kind of ends. I think this song is really powerful. And it really fits. Like everything on here really fits. I gave it a 4.5. 
it's another sick track definitely one you should check out on this project and i guess that brings us to the end of this album review so i mean this is a project where we honestly just have a consistent series of songs spanning i'm gonna say a, a kind of similar series of beats like it all kind of taps into the same thing so for 32 minutes if you're not necessarily liking the first couple of songs you might not feel the rest of the project but lately i found myself really drawn into this 90s throwback music that comes out in 2019 feel that we're getting these days from guys like west side gun and the griselda squad and how excellently they put it all together so i really dig this project i give it a 4.481 i think it's consistent it's powerful all the rhymes are dope what i understood made sense and i'm certain that somebody out there could break down every lyric on this album and point out how it all is actually brilliantly written in a way but mostly west side guns delivery is explosive passion like it's an animated character and alongside his crew it fills it out like it makes the roster feel more complete it makes griselda such an interesting and dynamic group of people anyway that's all i got to say about that i look forward to hearing what you have to say in the comments of this video let me know what you thought about the west side gone project let me know what you thought about this review let me know what your feelings are about anything in particular it's fucking hot in montreal what's the weather like out by you anything if you make that effort to leave a comment i'll make that effort to answer you you can also hit subscribe on this channel for more reviews you can hit that like button if you felt it and on that note special thanks to the patrons ismail gadamsey chris prado jonathan barnes dj black hurricane linda williams they support what we do they help us get a new camera dj black hurricane is going to tell us what album he wants to see us review very 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 soon i think we're recording it tomorrow um it'll come on next week so yeah for a dollar or more a month you can join us on the squad and help us become something much better in life thank you for watching totally appreciate it i make music myself you can check that out on this channel if you want to let me know what you think and on that note i'm gonna go check out that uh return of the uh, revenge of the dreamers 3 album because that's the next time we'll be recording today peace